So lately, I've been playing a game from Phoenix Labs that a lot of you guys may already know about called Dauntless. It's a monster hunting RPG where you have to hunt down a specific type of monster known as a behemoth. And when Phoenix Lab found out I was playing it, they said, Hey, do you want to make a video where you talk about it and we'll pay for it? My response? Hell yeah, I do! This video is sponsored and brought to you by Phoenix Labs' Dauntless. The game sees its full polish release September 26th. It will be available on the Nintendo Switch in December, and they even have plans to release it on mobile in 2020. If you want to support me today and the game, please follow the Completionist Dauntless link in the description box down below to download and start playing today. The game is free. Also, be sure to check out the supported creator option during any and all in-game purchases. It's a great way to really do more with your dollar. You can support anyone really, but hey, if you want to support me, this is my creator code right here. Dauntless starts off with a really user-friendly character customization that you can change at any point, thankfully. Then, you're aboard an epic airship that suddenly befalls an attack leading to your drop into the thick of it. Ooh, quick and seamless tutorial, please and thank you. Then, you join your brethren and a host of colorful NPCs in a hub world known as Ramsgate Plaza. In Ramsgate, you can upgrade your gear and craft a bajillion weapons and armor parts, all based on the behemoths that you will take on. You can grab hidden collectibles, make it onto the physical leaderboard, Craft potions and consumables from Marcus. Craft guns or grenades from Janek. Fuse weapons and armor mods from the Middleman. Craft armor from Moira. Craft weapons from Wills. Or, the most important function in the game, you can pet the dogs. 10 out of 10, IGN, 100 for Mitsu score, 5 stars, Golden Globe. Give it an Emmy. The pooch is the best boy. Petting him is equally tied to my other favorite pastime, dancing on a ramp. The social aspects of Dauntless are squeaky clean and very useful. You can create guilds, make parties, and there's also in-game voice chat from the get-go. It's really nice to play with any of my friends no matter what the platform is. But what I was even more impressed with was that if you decide to switch from PC to console or vice versa, your account will stay intact the entire time. You never have to start over, which is incredibly nice considering all the time and resources that go into strengthening your slayer. Alright, so before I go into depth about the meat and potatoes of Dauntless, the monster hunting, I want to quickly commend the game for how easy to digest it is for newcomers. Nothing is needlessly complicated or overwhelming, and yet there are still complexities and nuances to discover as you learn the game and grow into it. And that's one thing that I was deeply mistaken about. I thought the game would be a short romp through the woods where you fight many versions of only a few monsters, but I owe Dauntless a big apology. This game is enormous. It features nearly two dozen different behemoths. It hosts hours upon hours upon hours of gameplay and Phoenix Labs is continuing support with new content to make playtime never grow stale. And what's even cooler is that the game is free and none of the premium features hold the game back at all. So if you're just starting out solo or you and some buddies want to see what the game is all about, there are tools and balances for either option. If you're solo and want to stay solo, you can select Private Hunt and the difficulty scales lower because you're alone and no one can revive you. Even if you're queuing up alone and don't manage to find a full party by the time the hunt starts, Dauntless still balances difficulty so that any team less than four isn't doomed. That's the level of care and attention to detail you'll find throughout Dauntless as you invest more and more time into it. All right, so after you've picked the items you need and picked the hunt or patrol you'd like, it's time to suit up and slay stuff. You know, I like that. Hey Dauntless, this can be your new tagline if you want, free of charge. So anyways, you and your team land on one of three different floating island types. In the first phase, you and your team collect resources you come across as you're located the behemoth. If you know your weapon and the behemoth type, it's a pretty straightforward dance between you and your prey. If you do well enough, you drive the behemoth off and begin the second phase, locating the behemoth again and finishing it off. If you and or your teammates are underprepared for any reason, it's likely your percentage will rise to danger status in your danger meter, and chances of success plummet drastically. Each slayer starts a hunt with five health potions and three emergency stim packs or self revives. If all those run out and your team reaches 100% danger, level, you and your team cannot be rezzed by fellow teammates and must watch in bitter helplessness as their brethren either clutch finish or ultimately wipe and meet the same fate. And this game's got me all kinds of poetic and stuff. If and when you beat a behemoth, you get a personal rank, a team rank, and a bunch of valuable loot. During the hunts, if you need specific limb parts or crafting fodder or quest gets, you need to zero in on those parts until they break. Sometimes your teammates won't damage those parts enough before the end of the hunt, so in a way it becomes its own mini challenge in my mind. It adds another gaming element to the sport of playing Dauntless. Different types of hunts yield different loot. Different color damage communicates different results and outcomes. 
and the variety of weapons to pick and choose from drastically changes the player experience to another level. At the time of this video, there are currently six different weapon types to pick from. The axe, high damage at the cost of speed, chain blades, basically full Kratos monkey mode, war pikes, which are fast pokey low damage boys that leave foes looking like Swiss cheese, hammers, which are really cool jet powered sledges for knocking behemoths on their butts, repeaters, which are pew pew guns, if you love the repeaters, you don't need any other weapon type, and lastly, my preferred weapon of choice, the sword. Swords are the perfect middle between speed and damage. And what's great is that all the weapons get their own special moves that you can change out. With the sword, you can either go super fast and dodge across and throw out beams, or you can spin to win, baby, like a barbarian whirlwind style. And if you really want to see the whites of their eyes, Dauntless just released a new weapon type called Aether Strikers, which essentially are little Wolverine claws. They'll let you get up close and personal as you slay those big boys. For every behemoth and Dauntless you go up against, you're able to craft an entire armor set and one of each of the melee weapons. All behemoths and their gear sets have associated elements too. It can be a little confusing and overwhelming at first, but after some time with it, it's quite simple to understand. Essentially, if you want to fight a frost behemoth, you'll want a blaze weapon to melt it and ice armor to soften its blows. For a blaze behemoth, it'd be the opposite. There are three pairs of type counterparts in Dauntless and no triangles, so you don't have to memorize pocket monster typing all over again. In addition to Frost vs. Blaze, there's Terra vs. Shock and Umbral vs. Radiant. Within the scope of this video, the guys at Phoenix Labs also challenged me to unlock Trials Mode, which essentially is the new endgame content that came out a couple of months ago. And let me tell you, it has been no easy undertaking. I have spent many, many hours honing my skills, buffing and tailoring my gear, and learning the very ins and outs of every behemoth, their strengths, their weaknesses, their patterns. I have become so good at this game. So, ladies and gents, yes, I did do it. I unlocked the Trials Mode after beating the main game, and that required grinding my weapon and armor parts past 550 strength. If that wasn't hard enough, Trials Mode is for the extra supreme tryhard masochists out there. This mode is truly Herculean in difficulty. I'm embarrassed to even show my best attempt, but here it is. Okay, so if you want more loot for beating the baddies and some extra cosmetics or currencies per day that you've logged into the game, I couldn't recommend the Hunt Pass enough. Especially if you consider that time is money, the Hunt Pass will save you a ton of time when you're trying to grind baddies for that favored weapon or upgrade. Every cosmetic piece can be transmogged into your current gear so that you can get the bonuses of your craft and armor but the visuals of a hip, mysterious spaceman. So with all this said, I think Dauntless is a great introductory test to see if you'd be a big fan of the monster boss grinding type genre. Dauntless is free to play and it's available on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and in December on Nintendo Switch with mobile coming in 2020. Thank you once again Dauntless for sponsoring today's video. And hey, be sure to follow the link in the description down below and use my creator code via the support a creator button. That's it, that's all guys, and happy slaying.